You are now listening to the News Fusion Radio Hour. Hello, listeners. Welcome back to another Youth Fusion Radio Hour podcast. It's Natalie, Marie, and Sophie, and Brittany here today. We have another interesting topic for you, self-care and self-isolation. What is self-care, you may ask? It is when you do activities on purpose to take care of your mental, physical, and emotional health. We'll share some of our tips and tricks in how we care for ourselves. They're all super easy and don't require too many materials. Before we get into our self-care from anywhere chat, uh, we need to find out which of Sophie's two truths and a lie was in fact the lie. Okay, so are you guys ready for the big reveal? I think some of you already guessed what is my lie, but I'm going to pretend nobody knows. Um, I am for sure a big sleepwalker. To my credit, it hasn't happened for a while, or I guess like I haven't realized that it's happening or been happening in a while. Um, but I guess, like, how would I know? Because I've only caught myself sleepwalking twice. Anyways, getting off track. Um, one time I had a sleepwalking episode where I walked into the bedroom of my friend's parents and tried to crawl into bed with them. Really not a good look when you're trying to make friends in middle school. Maybe it was high school. I don't know. I'm not going to get Yeah. Eggplant, eggplant. Eggplant is absolutely my favorite vegetable. And finally, no, I can absolutely not do five push ups. I can maybe do like two kneeling push ups. I think I've embarrassed myself with this one, but luckily I'm backed up by my fellow tall friend Marie, who agrees that it's nearly impossible for a tall person to do push ups. It's just like science or physics, right, Marie? Like, it doesn't work. There's too much body weight. I don't know the logistics, but I don't think it's actually fair to assume that tall people can do as many push ups as short people. Anyways, I am actually getting better at push-ups. It's something that I've been trying to do as some kind of self-care practice. It's fun to have a small thing to slowly and like very slowly get better at. Talk to me in a year and I'll maybe be able to do like 10. That's a good goal. Thank you. Alrighty. Well, then let's move into our self-care chat. So you might think self-care sounds like something that's selfish, but it's totally not. We all need to care of ourselves uh, so that we can actually also take care of others. It can be as easy as giving yourself a daily routine like waking up every morning at 7 and drinking a glass of lemon water. Or it's even like committing to a 15-minute run every day. So super simple and easy to follow. So really it's anything that can make your day better. So personally, uh, what I've been doing is something that's, well, when I Google it, it's more therapeutic online, they say. Uh, Self-care activities like knitting and crocheting, right? So it's like the constant moving, which is supposed to be super therapeutic for yourself. Uh, if you don't actually have knitting needles at home, uh, you could also use two sharpened pencils. I think that would work. <laughs> the same shape. Journaling is also super therapeutic. It allows you to release your feelings and emotions. So I've kind of started a novel about my life. It's for my eyes only because it's super embarrassing. But you guys should try it out. Just kind of think like you're going to sell this book in 10 years when you're famous. Um, right about what you've been doing. And then lastly, I also love to uh, pet my dog as much as I can. She's an actually a registered therapy dog, like the other dogs out there, but it, she does calm me down, and I know she enjoys the pets. So I'm not sure about you other radio hosts. Annie, does uh, your your puppy get some pets? Miss PMN? Or that, that was her name, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, PMN. Princess Macadamia Nut. She's been getting a lot of attention lately. She had like five different adventures this weekend. Uh, And she says, thank you for asking about her. It's very (laughs) considerate of you. She's also going to be getting a bath later today. Uh, She is not too pleased about that, but it needs to happen. Yeah, yeah, she's kind of stinky. (laughs) But on that note, I'd like to mention that sometimes self-care isn't a lot of fun while it's happening. Uh, I'll speak for myself here because I don't know. Self-care is different for everybody. but Sometimes it means, for me, picking up groceries from the grocery store, even though the stores are really scary right now, or cleaning the house, or doing laundry. And these are all things that I don't really enjoy doing, but I always feel better about my day when I've completed those things. So it's, I mean, like, it's kind of like Maka. She 
doesn't like taking a bath, but we assume that she'll feel a bit better afterward. <laughs> I mean, I definitely understand the challenges of self-care. For me, my self-care nemesis is cooking, in which I find it hard to take the time to cook because normally I'm super hungry when it comes around to cooking. And then it's also, I have to clean up the huge mess that I make when I'm cooking, when I'm done cooking, and I'm super tired from eating all the food that I've eaten. But there's some other aspects of self-care that I really enjoy. For me, my biggest self-care pleasure, I guess, is exercise. Through exercise, I feel strong and my mind calms down a lot. With quarantine, I have been feeling blue because my normal routine of going to the gym and practicing jiu-jitsu has been disrupted. However, I've been making the most of quarantine and have been running and finding online workouts on YouTube. It's not the same as the gym, but it makes me feel so much better and it gives me the energy to get through my day. So I was born in May, and therefore I am a Taurus. And apparently we are the kind of people who love self-care. Weirdly enough, I'm also a workaholic and I always thought that work was self-care for me because I strive the more when I'm working, but and I could never also relate like when people are telling me about how they're doing meditation or yoga. This stuff don't really work for me. But then I realized like, there is not like one type of self-care. It's not like a formatted thing. And some of you might need to take a bubble bath to relax. Um, for me, very different from Brittany, it's actually cooking or cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, I like to also do the crossword or reading. Beating has me going for the past two years too. And I think it's because like it's very high concentration activities that are allowing me to escape from like work or small day-to-day -day anxieties. So whatever you do that makes you feel better is important. And sometimes it's Better to define like very small tasks or small things as self-care. That, that one big activity, yes, Karen, we would all like to go to the spa, but we don't really have the money or the time. Anyway, I think it's really important to finish on a quote from my favorite show, Parks and Recreation, with Tom and Donna saying, treat yourself. Three words for you, treat yourself. Okay guys, so normally in this portion we would do our midway game, but right now we are going to do a midway self-care exercise um, to take care of your mental and your physical health. So everybody get up out of your seats or if you're standing walking around, that's fine, stop and we're just going to shake everything out really quick, get everything nice and loose. And we're going to start and do just five jumping jacks. So one jumping jack, two jumping jack, three jumping jack, four jumping jacks, five jumping jacks. That was awesome. You guys, I'm, I feel awesome. Let's, let's lie on our backs and do five sit-ups. If you can't do a full sit-up, don't worry. Just do a crunch. And make sure you breathe out on your way up. Ready, set, and one sit up. Two sit ups. Three sit up. And four sit ups. Last one, five sit up. That was awesome, everybody. I feel great. My abs feel great. Well, my pretend abs. <laughs> and now, now we're going to do one last exercise, and this is just for you, Marie and Sophie. We're going to do some push-ups. So if you can't do a full push-up, don't worry. We're gonna, You can do them from your knees and just do what you can. And we're going to go now. One push-up, two push-up, three push-up, four push-up, five push-up. That was 
awesome, everybody. I hope you feel better. I feel better. It's just taking those small 10 to 5 minutes a day to do something that makes your day feel great. Um, you can do exercises like sit-ups, squats, push-ups, anywhere, at any time of the day, and all you need is like 5, 10 minutes. Oh, that was hard just after dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely feel so much better. It just takes a few minutes a day to practice self-care. And all you have to do is like little exercises like those. You can do squats and sit-ups anywhere. Yeah, but like that was very unfair game, like Sophie said, <laughs> for us full and beautiful human beings. <laughs> um, so actually the science, because I've been researching it, like to give excuses <laughs> to people, <laughs> all people have more mass. Exactly. And we have to work more to push ourselves up. And even so though I actually, have like huge muscle now, I'm trying to work on that. <laughs> I always wonder why I couldn't do a headstand. And I always sucked at gymnastic when I was younger. Well, that's why, because I was taller than everybody. Marie, can you do a cartwheel? Mm, I can't remember a time where I could. That was very, I remember <laughs> cartwheeling. That was the most ridiculous thing ever. <laughs> Because <laughs> I tried this weekend and it did not go well. Like, oh. that's another one of these things where I'm, like, getting my legs above my head all the way into the air. I'm, like, how? That just doesn't make sense because of gravity. Like, I don't understand. I just don't understand. So. I mean, like, not world-famous gymnasts are all pretty short. Exactly. I mean, not to brag, but the short person over here can do a cartwheel. Of course. Of course the short person can do a cartwheel. <laughs> yeah okay cool i also have a self-care activity for us that we can all do together and it's burpees yes! oh! you're kidding <laughs> i am i am kidding no okay. we're not gonna do burpees <laughs> um we are actually going to do some belly breathing so this activity is really just about grounding you wherever you're at um yeah it's kind of a mindfulness exercise uh and the nice thing about it is you can do this pretty much anywhere you can be sitting down you can be standing up when we get out of quarantine you could probably do some good breathing on the metro if you want to maybe you don't want to breathe deeply on the metro <laughs> So for this activity, I would like everybody to put one hand on your belly. I know you can't see that right below your rib cage. And you can put your other hand on your chest, sort of like over your heart if you'd like. And what we're going to do is we're going to breathe in together for four counts through your nose. You're going to hold your breath for two counts and then we'll breathe out of our mouths for six counts. And when you breathe out, Pretend you're whistling, so sort of like purse your lips together. So we can kind of try this together really quickly. So breathe in through your nose. One, two, three, four. Hold your breath for one, two, and breathe out through your mouth. One, two, three, four, five, six. In through your nose. One, two, three, four, hold, one, two, breathe out, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one more time, in through your nose, one, two, three, four, hold, for one, two, and then out, for one, two, three, four, five, six okay how is everybody doing so good really nice i was trying to whistle but i couldn't make the sound hey i feel like someone was whistling because i definitely heard like a little <laughs> I, I was whistling it was like yeah. yeah you don't actually have to whistle it's just um it's really about just like feeling the air go out through your mouth and that's a good way to do it 
yeah, it's just I was sort of just using that as an example for how to how to hold your mouth. Um, okay, well, definitely. Yeah. Did you guys have, um try like the lion breath? If you guys want to try that at home, you just open your mouth, stick your tongue out, and uh, you're not roaring, but you're just letting the your breath. Wait, so cute. Um, I feel so relaxed after that, Annie. It's also a super good reminder that, like, I guess, as you said, you can actually do self-care literally anywhere. Like, I feel like we've all said this in different ways, but it's just about, like, taking even 30 seconds in your day to check in with yourself and, like, do a small thing that will help you calm down or, like, make you feel better in that moment. And... Like, even if you don't have time to cook a nice meal, or go for a run or take a bath or whatever it is, there's always going to be a tiny, like, second that you can find to be like, how am I doing? How do I feel? What do I need? And even just asking yourself those questions is a huge step. Well, guys, thank you so much to our listener out there. Keep tuned for the next episode of the Use Fusion Radio Hour. We won't tell you what it is about because as is usual, we haven't decided. Uh, have a great day, a great week. Be grateful for all the things you have and remember to practice self-care. And if you want to share any idea what we should talk about next, let us know. You can subscribe to our channel and you can follow us on Facebook at Youth Fusion Indigenous Youth Community. And we would like to thank Youth Fusion and all our listeners out there. Jingle, done. Bye. 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 Bye.